Grow em Big with Steve Bartilla. Brought to you by Huntworth and these other fine sponsors. I know you got to be asked this because I'm asking it all the dang time. What is the perfect food plot? To what should I plant this year to attract and grow big deer? Answer that one because I don't got, I do not have a simple answer to that, my friend. The, the best answer I can give you is you need to plant what's going to perform the best in your area, your region. Uh, you know, we have products that you can plant from the south to the far north. And a lot of the products in the south won't do well in the north, the north won't do well in the south. So you really wanna get with, you know, contact me, look it up, and I mean, we can steer you right on what to plant uh, in your area. Now with me, I'm a diehard clover guy. You cannot beat our trophy clover mix. Uh, but again, that is a product. And that has a lot to do with where you are. Exactly. Because you happen to be in central Illinois. Yep. How much, how many days was that clover covered with a foot of snow last year, Robbie? Oh, in Illinois, not very much at all. Now, you go to northern Wisconsin. Exactly. Well, it's covered with this much snow. Yep. You know, so that is a perfect example of what you're talking yep. about. Exactly. About how in your area, man, and I agree emphatically, if I was going to plant one thing, Yep. It'd be clover. Exactly. That's it. Yep. Central Wisconsin? Uh-uh. Right. <laughs> Northern Minnesota? Heck no. Yep. It's good. I'm sorry. Continue. But with me, like with the clover, even being here in Central Wisconsin, if it was me personally, I'm the guy that's always going to plant clover no matter where I'm at. Yep. Same here. Uh, in the spring, to have the deer something to feed on through this all through the summer. Another thing I like about clover is if you're wanting to use it for a rotation, let's say you're gonna put your brassicas like your honey hole in up here, which works mm -hmm. excellent up in this area. So that honey hole thrives on nitrogen. So when you plant that clover in the spring and let them deer feed on it through the summer, that clover is actually sucking nitrogen in from the atmosphere, stored in the soil. And then when you plant them annuals in the fall, they're gonna thrive on that nitrogen that clover is also put in that soil. Which brings up an outstanding point that I think pitifully few realize. What's that orange coating on that clover seed? That, uh, that's our own germination coating that helps it germinate. It's an inoculant. Yes, it's an inoculant, yep. yes. Um, mm -hmm. Do clovers require an inoculant in order to fix nitrogen? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So you go down, you go down to the co-op, and I'm not telling you not to, but you go down to the co-op and you get a bunch of clover seeds, you go throw them in the ground thinking that you're going to go ahead and fix nitrogen and nope. make it so, uh, if that isn't, Nope. You need to inoculate that. Same with soybeans. Same. Anything yep. that fixes nitrogen must be either planted yep. somewhere that had uh, had that bacteria introduced into the yep. soil previously, or it must be <coughs> coated, or it's not going to fix nitrogen. It's not going to fix nitrogen. Okay. So, You're exactly right. Yeah. So that's that's one favorite thing I like doing. But the biggest thing is is picking the right seed. You know, a lot of people out there, they don't have the big, nice open areas. They just got small backwood plots. So there's different mixes to choose for like what we call our no-till mixes. So that's gonna work where if you had a backwoods plot, you're only getting three to four hours sunlight a day, you're not gonna get our honey hole to grow where you'll get our no sweat to grow. So it's just picking the proper mix for the application. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna nail the mix for the application for the location. Mm -hmm. Obviously, deer need to want it. Yes. Yeah. And wouldn't you say diversity? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so, I mean, if, please correct me if I'm wrong. If you are going to try to design the perfect one food plot, mm -hmm. what you are going to do is you are going to make sure that whatever seeds you're putting in that dirt mm -hmm. actually are going to grow yeah, there. Exactly. Yes. That they meet your goals, yep. which is to draw deer, feed them, harvest them, and make them more healthy. Absolutely, yep. And diversity is really awesome Very. because deer do not like eating the exact same thing no. every single day they any don't. more, any more right. than we do. Yep. They want diversity. Diversity, yeah. So if you can nail what they have, give them diversity, especially if you can give them unique plantings that yep. that neighbor's not. Yep. Match it, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. We are. Final thoughts. 
brought to you by Huntworth. Everybody's looking for that perfect seed. The problem is, is the perfect seed is different based on where you are, what your conditions are, what time of year it is, what the whitetail's needs are at the time. Match those seeds to your environment. Make it so that they will thrive there. Diversity and make it unique. You do those things and you just hit the perfect. You hit the, yes, you did. You hit the, yep. Thanks much, my friend. You're very welcome.